All right, welcome back to another episode of Children of the Watch. And this is our Star Wars discussion panel show. You're joined with a full Jedi Council tonight, as it were. I am Brian, and joined as always by my co-host Willie. Willie, how are you doing? Hey, good, good. Excited to jump into this, Willie. I know we we did an exhaustive look. Uh, it was our longest episode at talking about Chapter Thirteen, The Jedi. Back with us tonight, also we have John joining us again. John, good evening. Hello. And (laughs) and then making his Mando debut, we have uh, Jeffrey. And uh, Jeff, um, you and I were working on a podcast called The Super Story Bros. Um, I'm excited. You've done a bunch of uh, other podcasts as well, but I'm excited to have you join the conversation. How are you tonight, Jeff? I'm good. It's, uh, It's fun to be here, and I'm just happy to talk to anybody about this show, I think. Um, I, we've talked about how we've watched it. I watched this one huddled in my bed with my phone just because I like I gotta see. It was like midnight oh one, whenever this that came out, and I was just I'm glued to it. Such a wonderful show, but yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited to um, get started. So we are going to be discussing Chapter Thirteen again, the Jedi of the Mandalorian, but also the show as a whole. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is something that Willie and I discussed in our episode. Um, and this is it. We're going to start on a bit of a speculative note. Um, so Ahsoka Tano, live action, awesome. We're excited about it. But decides to not train the child, uh, or Grogu, as we're now referring to him, or not referring to him. Um, however, everyone, every, your mileage may vary on that. Um, but she gives Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, his new task, which is to bring the Jedi, or um, bring the child to a planet, and bring him to a seeing stone and have him reach out with the force and see if a Jedi appears and a Jedi may come and, and meet with him. So I, the question I want to start with is, how do we feel about that in general? And I'm, I'm, Willie and I, we are calling it Jedi Mountain, the Jedi Mountain quest. <laughs> so if Din Djarin is successful and brings the child to Jedi Mountain and the child does in fact reach out with the force, who do we want to see? But more importantly, what do we think is best for the for the show's story? So, Willie, I'm going to have you start because uh, after we, <laughs> as it always happens, after we finish recording, you and I were just chatting quickly, um, and and you had a take that honestly I loved in the moment and have thought about ever since. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you first. Tell me who you want to see or think we might see at Jedi Mountain. I think uh, I think it's got to be Ghost Yoda. I, I think a hundred percent. Um, he, he's reaching out. There's, yeah. I could see the show pulling some other, you know, random Jedi that is live that we didn't know about. Um, but I think, I think for, for, for Grogu, like, I really think it's gotta be, gotta be for Shiona. And I really, I, I love that to be honest. Like I, I didn't, you know, my mind obviously went to, uh, you know, Mace Windu lives and all that. I was like thinking of the craziest things. But then when I actually started thinking about the story as you and I were talking and you said, you know, I think it makes the most sense for it to be Yoda because it's the almost the familial connection. Um, and then you can play on the relationship that he has with Din and that kind of family aspect. So I really loved that idea. And I'm hoping, and you know, we have seen, um, Ghost Yoda in the in the sequel trilogy, and we also really saw Ghost Yoda in the Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. So, and I'm telling you, that is going to be more important than people think it is. Um, but um, yeah, I really love that idea. That was my first thought, actually. After, yeah. No. After hearing that they had to go to Jedi Mountain, that yeah. was that was the first thought. I was like, all right, well. The only other relevant character here, I dude, I would I would still be fully willing to to watch Samuel L. Jackson reprise his role. <laughs> that's not my Destroy that's not my vote. Um, but no, not mine. <laughs> yeah, John, why don't you tell me your? I think if if it's something that we've discussed before, I think what your choice is, we can get into it. And you can tell me what it is, but if it is what I think it is, um, some interesting developments have been happening on that front. So why don't you go ahead and tell us what your choice would be? Uh, so I think, I think very realistically, we could see either Ezra mm. or Luke himself. 
And I don't think that he's going to get to Jedi Mountain right away. I think we're going to have another either couple or single filler episodes before we even approach that. So there's a chance that next episode maybe we'll get a name drop. Um, probably not. <laughs> uh, it's been, it's been you know, entertainment for entertainment's sake for half the season. And then just awesome, awesome things thrown in the mix. And I, I'm here for it. So, yeah, and so the thing the thing with Luke, um, to go back to that is you said Luke originally on on the last episode that we that we had you on, and I I immediately was like, there's absolutely no way they are never going to put Luke in. They're not going to recast that role. You have no shot of that happening. And then this happened, and I was like, shit, we could be seeing Luke. Like I. Yeah. My gut reaction was wanting to say Ezra. However, uh, I think that that could potentially Ezra is potentially spinoff bait with Ahsoka uh, and Thrawn. I don't know that Thrawn's going to be a Mandalorian character. We can kind of put a pin in that, but um, Luke Skywalker, I think, is in play. Um, the graphic artist uh, Bo- Boss Logic on social media, he does awesome stuff but did a sebastian stan as luke skywalker and it looked awesome and i'm kind of here for it i mean how do we feel about luke skywalker being recast and in, in the world of the show even if it's just a cameo there's a lot of very very happy <clears throat> people who got lost in the last jedi and were like that's not my luke skywalker <laughs> skywalker back go ahead take him take your idealist take your idealist leader and and you can you can relive that fantasy. I think it's fine. I think this show has done something really interesting in that they take one episode arcs. They don't take four episode arcs. They take a uh, character, they take an idea, and just let's you know let's see it out, play out, and then be done. I think Ahsoka's breaking that rule already. I think she's not done. We're not done seeing her. Um, which means yeah. we'll get her as a repeat, but we didn't get a full, I, we got a full enough story, but there was a lot of teasing going on that made it feel like, you know, there's a lot more now. And then that was kind of um, weird. I, I think Jedi Mountain, first of all, gives very like Candy Mountain Charlie vibes when I hear you say it <laughs> <laughs> that now. But the, um, this idea that it's a beacon, right? I think it's going to attract a lot of people. That's an old frequency and everyone's paying attention to it. So you've got, inquisitors you've got the empire you've got the dark side looking at this not just jedi it's making us feel safe because ahsoka told us about it but we know that there's it's been tumultuous for any youngling reaching out we got that in the the more recent games and things so i think it's going to be kind of a stirring the pot we're going to get a lot of people coming to get um grogu now name is grow going on me it's not it's a horrible pun I never it's, I like that. Bad. it's 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 you know what it is is it's every yoda yaddle which is a complete erasure right now we're forgetting yaddle and she's a <laughs> it's, it is yaddle erasure um, so that's a, yeah um but um there's like one syllabic name for that that species um, I personally think, and you brought this up, Brian, I think the last podcast, um, because I think I'm the biggest fan, like, comment, subscribe on each one, uh, the Kyle Katarn thing, I think we're not far away from that. I think he's most in parody with Mando, um, the dark troopers, you don't bring that in and not have some connection to those games. And, um, I just, I'm here for a moldy crow, Razor Crest team up. Uh, and I want to see that happen in real time. That or Bill Burr come back, and I think it'd be fun to just see him on Jedi Mountain. Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah. <laughs> no, I I truly like Kyle Katarn, uh, and I like it for a few reasons. One, it's not someone that a lot of a lot of the Star Wars fandom I think has an attachment to. I think it's a very specific subset that would be very excited. So you can introduce a character to a lot of people you know it's kind of similar to ahsoka but i think more people are familiar with ahsoka than anyone else um and you still have um you know katarin is an interesting character but also has very close ties with luke skywalker so uh, i would also say if katarin's in play then i still think you might get the luke skywalker eventually or that he could be a potential element but um i think katarin again is interesting just for a number of reasons, just for all the various games he's in, Jedi Academy, um, Jedi Outcast, like he's an he's an interesting character you could play. There's a lot of history there, um, a lot of interesting stories with different dark side users. So you, I mean, if you're if you're moving the show in a direction of the Force, 
Kyle Katarn is actually a pretty good character to be that conduit without the weight of the legacy of the Skywalker saga. It, it, it's too much baggage there. I mean, it's going to be hard to get Luke in there and not feel that unless he comes from that rogue standpoint, that kind of chaotic good thing that, that it's not what Din is. It's not what the Mandalorian is. He's not chaotic good. He's not. He's very much lawful. He and maybe somewhere in the gray there, but he very much falls into, you know, I do what's best for the, you know, in these rule set. Um, and the, the, you start to loosen him up a bit, but you're always going to fall back to that, I think. Even when Mandalore is in play and, 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 and this distressed, you know, planet that he's supposed to be serving still falls out of line with his ideals. And so that's going to be a bigger problem. And Kyle Katarn's the opposite. So it'd be cool to see how that played out. Very similar to how, um, we saw him play out with the um, back in tattooing um, and, and, and that kind of lawlessness uh, with him there. But I'm sure there's more questions. We're going yeah. we're gonna to keep going. We're going to keep going back to Jedi Mountain. Yeah. Mountain. yeah, we're going to keep going back to Jedi Mountain because there are so many options. Uh, so believe it or not, my choice is as much as I would love to see it in some form or fashion, Mace Windu, I actually think for the story, and I'm interested to hear anybody's take on this, I actually think for the story, um, my my ideal scenario would be they get to Jedi Mountain, the child reaches out with the Force, and no one comes. Right. And that is, um, and and to me the reason I like that is for two reasons. One, it it's to quote uh, the sequels, if you will, uh, when Maz Kanata is talking to Rey, she says, "The belonging you seek is in front of you and not behind you." So you know the child is now an ex- like linked to. The prequel era, the Jedi Temple, he is part of that story now. So by reaching out with the Force, it's like trying to connect with something that he doesn't even fully remember. But the Mandalorian has been his father now. And so to have no one answer and to have the belonging be, well, this is my dad and maybe I'm just okay being with my dad. Now, Willie, you and I talked about the fact that he would choose the Mandalorian if if he has to have a choice. And now I'm sure you can bring in a character like Luke, like Kyle, like Yoda to have him make that choice. But I think it's even more impactful to have it be no one, to kind of have the child feel that, well, I am alone, but I'm actually not because I, I have my father figure with me and he's there. So I also like it for one other reason, and it's that we just kill the Jedi thread, plot thread, completely. We don't have to do it. We don't have to go, Luke. We don't have to do any more Force stuff. It's We've introduced that idea. We've introduced the Force, and now it's gone. We're done. We can move on. We can tell other stories. So any any reactions to that? Would we be okay with there being no Jedi that reaches back out? I think... Just quickly, it's it's. I think it's either you know there's too many people going after him. There's nobody, or I it potentially you know he he gets access. Din gets access to the Force and through the child, meaning that the child Im- gives him his memory in ways. So I think that we could see because as soon as Din gets somebody's name, he's like, I'm gone. I'm off that planet. Let's go. Let's go find that name. <laughs> Let's go find a Soko. Soko yeah. with one beacon on this entire planet. You know, it just it's it's yeah. it is very. But but so let's get him the story of I, I've heard the theory that Mace Windu saved Grogu. Let's see that yeah. happen in this, yeah. this scene. Um, so we get Samuel L. Jackson, but he's aged down and running out of the, the Jedi Temple with a baby tucked under his arm. And I think that would be <laughs> cool. we don't necessarily need to see him again, scarred up and, and angry like we saw Boba. But I don't know. That's I think that could also be an option. Yeah. So I have I have two kind of fleeting theories that I'm just going to say, and then I would like you guys to discuss your feelings on them. Um, what I actually think is going to, because I said what I would like to have happen when they get to the Jedi Mountain, but what I actually think is going to happen is that tracker that was placed on the crest in the previous episode is going to come to fruition, and Gideon is going to be at the top of the mountain waiting for them. And it's going to be some sort of Mando hasn't had to face a major hardship yet that like other like that isn't just him in danger. Like they had the scene in the cantina where they had to get out and like he was messed up. That was a major issue that he had to face, but he didn't have to make a choice there. He just kind of was like, no, leave me. And then obviously everything played out. 
um, he hasn't had a major conflict just slap him in the face and put him down into the dirt yet. And I think that that could be this next episode, or not next episode, but eventually uh, before the season's over. Um, my other thing, briefly, is I think that there is a high potential at this point for Cal Kestis to make an appearance in the show. That actor is very close with Disney now. So. Yeah, I haven't actually haven't heard that thrown around. Um, I'd be okay with that. I mean, I don't know if they have plans for sequels to Fallen Order. That'd be interesting. Um, again, my my thing with anybody that existed pre the original trilogy, so someone like Ahsoka or someone like Cal Kestis, um, someone like Ezra, is that you, well, I guess Ezra, you have the back door of he was caught with Thrawn and wherever they were, is you kind of have to answer for what were you guys doing. Um, so I'm, I'd be okay with it, but you kind of, I feel like you're almost you're asking too many questions for anybody that is familiar with the characters. Um, so interesting to see, but yeah, I do. Uh, you know, Willie and I had discussed that uh, the Moff Gideon versus uh, Din with the spear and the dark saber, and then uh, the child getting taken at the end of the season is li- is the likeliest uh, what we think. So. And I want to stay on the child. I think we're we're gonna leave Jedi Mountain for a little bit and <laughs> uh, take off our speculative hats. And I want to jump into uh, something I did mention before: is that the child is now linked to the history of Star Wars, the lore. He was at the temple. He was taken from the temple. He was rescued. He's no longer just a child that is part of this universe. He is now part of the larger tapestry of the Skywalker saga, as you will. So. Do we think that the show is benefiting from these larger connections? Like, do we want to see more of them? Do we want to see less of them? I mean, the, the show has covered things from video games, things from novels, uh, things from the movies, and obviously things from the animated show. I know, Willie, I'm going to start with you because of the Ahsoka. And yeah. we, we do love Ahsoka. And we do. I love Thrawn. I'm still on the fence about Thrawn. But do we want to see more of this, or or do we want the show to be uh, untethered yeah. to the to the larger tapestry? I mean, I think I think for the most part they've been pretty smart with how they've done everything this season. Um, I think they're following you know kind of a similar template to what they did with Rebels, where they kind of let the Mandalorian as a show stand on its own for one season before they started pulling everything in. Um, which which is very much what they do, um, you know, with with kind of keeping Ezra from from being a uh, a Jedi at first. Um, I think that it's an interesting question because for me, the worst example of how they've tied it to everything has been Grogu's backstory. Um, I think that's the area where you could have had where I think he's more interesting as a youngling who's force sensitive who wasn't trained in the temple. Um, who just came from nowhere or or anywhere? Um, I, I think his, I think his story is much more interesting in that way. Um, so I, I I think to 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 play both sides of the coin. I think it just depends how they do it. I like what they're doing so far with connecting the show to stuff like Ahsoka, um, to stuff like the larger arcs with Mandalore, um, to a lot of the really small ties and nods that they're pulling in. I think they've been fairly smart about almost all the connections they've made. Um, but I think that Grogu is is hands down. It's just like the best they could kind of come up with that sort of fit. Um, but I also think it's the least interesting. John, do you want more connections? Do you want to see more things? Or are you okay with not seeing anything else? I mean, I feel like if they're going to hint at all of that eventually we're going to see something i think that i like the modular episode dynamic that they're going with i think that i felt it way more than i thought i would with the ahsoka episode it was very locked in um there were expansions like little feelers that were coming out of the episode to like this could happen eventually but like i like that they're playing it one at a time more so than like let's do it like uh, you said let's do a four four episode arc. Like I don't need to see that. Like it's great that they're connect making connections, but like give us something new every time. Yeah, I'm I'm for it. 
Yeah, I think ultimately, you know, really to what you said, they're they're very smart about it. I think that I can take, um, you know, if you want to dole out things from the past, I'm here for it. Um, I think they're doing it in a smart way. So something like when Cobb Banth is riding the pod racer engine. Like, I'm here for stuff like that. Like, yeah. please, you know, put that in. And someone like Cobb Vanth, um, a, a novel character, fine. Um, I don't, I mean, I was, I had a, you know, a, a vague understanding of who that character was and the Boba Fett armor. It's, I think, I think my issue with it is when it gets heavy handed and the show becomes beholden to that. So um, if, if your spinoff theory generator is correct and that season two is going to serve as a springboard to the Ahsoka show to, um, you know, a Luke Skywalker show, whatever it is, I'm okay with that if that's how we're using it. I just don't want this show specifically to be beholden to that. Um, Jeff, I know, you know, you're, like we said, we, we talked about Katarn, so that would be an interesting uh, connection. So do you, are, are you okay with with these uh, additions and these these deep dives into the lore? I think, you know, as long as it's smart, the idea that it's one episode and you get your story and they get out, uh, Katarn could have his own episode and then he's out kind of thing. I'm, I'm very much for that. You know, I see this as, as actually a love letter to the EU more than anything else, right? It, it's really... Timothy Zahn vibes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Taking the best of what we have um, and bringing it up to cinema level. I mean, these are not, I mean, nothing against the cartoons. I think the, the, the honest truth is the best storytelling Filoni did was in those cartoons. And I think they are even outside of some of the storytelling we got in the sequels and prequels. Um, and even, you know, even some of the originals, I think we got some really great fleshing out of story. And it all comes back to the extended universe. None of this exists without um, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, that first novel. It doesn't happen without the, we don't have this depth of lore unless we had that tabletop game, you know, and this is a reboot of all of that. You know, this is <clears throat> taking, going through those. Kafan's story comes from the legend story of, of, of Boba Fett surviving the, the, the Sarlacc pit, which now is in canon. They're trying to take the best of that, I think, farm it for what they have and redeem some of these other stories. But my biggest problem is, like everyone else was saying, um, is it, it comes down to let's not lose too much of the mystery. I think what ends up happening too often with this kind of stuff is I know what a crate dragon looks like now. It looks like the worm from SpongeBob. Cool. You know? Awesome. <laughs> That's how that works. It's not these bones that you could you could put flesh onto. It's been put on there for you now. You know how it looks. Um and you know. That comes right along with I got to watch Tuscan Raiders run for you know for some reason that's a lot of fun to see. It's just you know you play with both 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 aspects and, and and the danger is that you know you lose some of the coolness of Star Wars. The universe does not seem as big, although we are expanding it. I guess is how I feel about it in general. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, I was fine with seeing the Kray Dragon, but I. I... You're right. Is that like when I'm going to watch that scene in New Hope again, when I see the skull, I'm just going to think of, well, that time when Mando blew it up from the inside. And just, you're just, right. It's just like, I don't like, know, like, should it have wings? It's a dragon. I always pictured it having wings. So now I know that it doesn't. And it's just the Dune monster, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just I think I think the worst example of this. Um, and anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, because this is going to be a topic that I know we're all excited to talk about eventually is, uh, in the movie solo when, you know, you're excited. I, I love the ending. Um, you have Kira and then she gets a hologram from Darth Maul and he's like, what's up? And I'm just like, well, okay, you're I guess. you friend now. Like, okay, <laughs> thank you, Darth Maul. <laughs> yeah. And she, he just shows up and I'm like, I... I recognize Darth Maul and like, I guess he's alive, but I don't see how that serves the larger story that you were trying to tell. So um, I think that's the worst example of it. And I think the show so far has avoided those pitfalls. Um, here's hoping that my Boba Fett is Thanos theory is correct. And that that character will be handled with the utmost care and respect uh, that I think the fandom would love him to have. But has Boba Fett ever been handled with care and respect? <laughs> no. Not seen the Christmas special, the holiday yeah, special. Yeah, exactly. Not the toys, not the Christmas special, not Return of the Jedi. Um, not actually the prequels when he just turned into a whiny kid. 
and yep. had to hold his dead dad's head in his hands. Um, that, that's rough. how you thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, hey, I, I said Mace Windu could come back and Boba's back. Like, can you imagine that fight? Uh, 50, year, 50 years of a blood feud. I'm into it. Um, so one thing I really liked about this episode, um, and this is pointed out in uh, the Star Wars Explained recap, is that there was kind of two at, at the end fight when Ahsoka is fighting um, the Imperial Navy designer, um, the one who has the, the Beskar st- staff, spear, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then Mando is outside doing his gunfight. And the gunfight in the town, it feels very Western. Um, you know, it's the people, the townsfolk, like, hiding indoors, and the people strung up. Like, it's a very Western vibe. I mean, they're literally doing a shootout. And then inside, you have the very more, uh, the, the, the high-class, um, it, it's in, like a, like, a Japanese garden, almost, like a very Zen garden. It has a very samurai, the fight itself has a very samurai feel. So two of George Lucas's biggest um, contributing factors when he was designing Star Wars is he wanted the fights to feel like samurai fights, and obviously the original Star Wars is based heavily on the Hidden Fortress, uh, Kira Kurosawa's, um, and, and then also Westerns. So I guess my question would be, this episode threaded that needle between the samurai and Western elements and also the larger Star wars the Force things, Jedi lightsabers, uh, Jedi Temple, all of that. Um, do we like it? What, what, what's our vibe on this? Do we feel more connected to the show when the show is doing its own Western samurai vibe, or do we like it more when it delves into seeing the new Republic in X wings fire at a space monster? And and we have more of that star Wars vibe. So, uh, Jeff, I'm going to go to you first because I know you're a big pilot fan. Um, so, um, what do you, are you more interested or intrigued with the show when it is doing those kind of staying true to those Western roots, or are you into it when it more delves into the Star Wars that we know and love from the movies? Yeah, Rogue One was the biggest head fake ever. If it's not a Rogue Squadron movie, what are we doing? Anyway, um, no. Uh, so the um, my takeaway from this actually is that the tone of the original trailers need to come back. Uh, we need that. We need... The, we get the dirty really well. In fact, I think they did a really good job um, on this planet, just making it feel that lived-in grunge um, and that this is a dying planet with a, with a like this monarch that lives inside this beautiful walled garden. And I think that that was cool, but I, I need more Mando being the knight errant. I need him not even not even pulling from Samurai, you know, pulling away from that idea a little bit, even from the gunslinger, is that he's, this, he's very much this knight errant. He, he, needs, he needs a boss. Um, I think he did really well in the guild and I think that they teased that really nicely. And I think that he needs to go back to that. He needs somebody to be telling him what to do. Um, cause I, I, I like him on his own, but I think, you know, this unsure relationship, I think is just him not having the guidance he needs. Um, and he needs to be kind of brought into the tutelage of somebody and, and still expanded because he's missing that. You need a check in guy. You need to, you need to, you know, like, um, like what? He, what? What? In the first season, what he was, the guild was to him, and the, what we got from the from the from the for the first shot, we need to go back to that. And I'm sure after they've spun off everything they need to spun off, it'll they'll just kind of let Din be that guy that just jumps in from show to show, just be like, oh, I'm on another quest, I'm gonna go get the thing and bring it back. Like, Good job, Din, had a boy. But I actually would want that. That's the stories I'm most interested. in. I think that's when he's at his best. Um, not when he's dealing with the force and even he doesn't know how to deal with the force and he's still, you know, his laser swords, he's calling it what our dad's called it, which is fun. Um, I like that she doesn't correct him on that, by the no, way. And she just kind of like laughs at him. She's, she's Luke where he was in, in the last Jedi. She's <laughs> just like, I've got things I got to do. There's great emeralds that are still out there. I need to kill like this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's the best move. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a quick little detour here uh, because I actually want to follow up, Jeff, on your mentor piece. But quickly, Willie, this episode was called The Jedi, and two people call Ahsoka a Jedi, and she does not correct them. I'm not okay with this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I think that's one of the things that probably stuck out to me most about her character, actually, um, is, you know, we've... We, 
we've gotten so much of her story in different chunks. Um, and, you know, really the last time we saw her, um, timeline wise, at least, she was definitely not referring to herself as a Jedi. Um, and it's interesting that she wouldn't, you know, one, that she's kind of okay, like she, she's kind of okay being associated with them right now, mm-hmm. um, which is, which is even more interesting. Um, I don't, uh, I'm convinced that we don't see Ahsoka the rest of the season. Um, I think, she, I think she was just planted, um, for that, for Filoni to, to, you know, pitch his own, uh, Ahsoka show. Um, so, so, you know, that's, that's something I, I would really like to see fleshed out, um, because we don't know, um, her, I mean, there have been times when she's completely closed herself off from the force altogether. Um, so, you know, we don't really know what her relationship is. Um, with with the Jedi at large, um, you know. That being said, I am very very happy that she was not willing to train uh, Grogu. Yeah, I th- I think I think that is that is the Ahsoka we know and have seen developed um, through all, all of these different things. That in in no way um, you know does she want to take anyone else through that after what she's seen the Jedi do, um, and now after seeing you know the rise and fall um, you know of, of Vader as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she's okay with being associated with the Jedi because Luke Skywalker brought sexy back and they're all like, we're cool again. We didn't cause the de- destruction of uh, the society anymore. Does she know about Luke? Like that's, that's- I would assume so. Right. Unless, you know, unless she went into the world between worlds to get Ezra slash Thrawn. See, I don't think she did that though. I'm going to take another speculative detour right now and say that I, I still think Ezra is locked in Thrawn's wine cellar. I think that's why she wants to find Thrawn is because Ezra's there and she wants to save him. I think it's a rescue mission. I think that's the Ahsoka miniseries, wherever you want to call it. That's my guess. So I don't know what the hell she's been doing. <laughs> At least someone like Hera, uh, Hera Sandula was like they say that she was at the Battle of Exegol in uh, the Rise of Skywalker and that she was um, she's in squadrons so she is like been part of she's been a general she's been part of the uh, rebellion since Jump Street she's been part of the resistance like hair has been around so they've addressed that so I don't know what ah- Ahsoka's doing and actually I'd be interested to find out in her own show not this show but jumping yeah. back uh, to the mentor thing because um, Jeff you mentioned that you liked it when uh, Mando was part of the guild and have Greek Karga kind of as a boss or kind of moving him around. John, I remember early on, and perhaps you don't feel this one anymore, but you said that that's kind of how you saw Boba Fett as as the role is, you know, kind of guiding him through what it means to be a Mandalorian or just a bounty hunter in general. I expect Disney to do somewhat influence um, Favreau into having a at first abrasive relationship between Boba and Mando. And then eventually at some point they're going to have to kind of do a mentor student type of situation. Um, Even if it's super brief, like it could be a long running thing where like, maybe that's how the show ends is just him starting his training with Boba or some ridiculous thing. I don't know why they would do that. Um, Or it could be just a brief moment of like, I was in your shoes once. This is what I did wrong. Like you should choose a different path, something that you're more comfortable with. Like, that's kind of how I feel about how their interaction would go after the eminent fight between the two of them, because I feel like that has to happen. I'm into it. Um, my thing is that I like strong and competent Mando. I like Mando that knows what he's doing. I like Mando in this episode specifically when he was doing the gunfight um, and the guy was laying down his weapon and Mando was like, yeah, I know you're full of shit. And then uh, seconds later when someone's like behind you and he just, Mando immediately spins around and shoots the guy. So I like Mando in a world that he feels comfortable with. I'm not saying he can't be challenged. That's why I'm all for the Gideon versus the Viper um, on top of Jedi Mountain. Like, (laughs) here we go. With, with my Beskar spear and let's do it 100 percent um i'm all for mando being challenged but i don't want him to be this uh, i keep calling him in my own in my own head he's like the the kid with the butterfly meme where he's just like all that like with all the force stuff where he's just like constantly like what's the force what's a jedi like what's a light what's a what's this, this laser sword <laughs> yeah exactly like i 
he's like what, what am i supposed to do with this rock like he's not gonna listen and he's just like uh, you know it's kind of funny at first but it just ultimately feels like eh. like i i think this the show is so much stronger again because he hasn't taken his mask off so we only get his voice and his body language to to have him guide his emotion and I, I just like mando being in control again not saying he can't be challenged so i like that better i like when the show is essentially a western jeff i absolutely love the idea of them getting back to like the stormtrooper helmets on spikes um from the trailer and uh the quacky and monkey is being roasted over a fire um i mean i think the show's at its best when you had an ig88 droid um mando and his team just you know getting the most motion out of that droid you possibly can and, and that be mando being more of a foil for everything else than than him being the 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 one that needs to change i don't need him i can he can be static he can be his you know lawful good i follow this way i'm part of a cult that we found out you know there were chipping part of a cult. And, and it's so weird to to have him to fill all these roles the han solo goofiness the the um the dutiful protector the bounty hunter would be weird to bring back now because he's moved so far from that but i mean that's where i feel like he did his best work as a character he came fully packaged i didn't need any more from from um from his character but here we are he's dead in fact actually i have it here as a tweet pulled up it's a perfect encapsulation of where we are the mandalorian is about a single father in a gig economy trying to survive to take care of his child <laughs> All the outward mask that conceals his emotions from his child, his colleagues, and the world, and also his car keeps breaking down. We're <laughs> from the bounty hunter. Hard <laughs> out, and, and that's fine. I just, I, I think I need him to be the leader of the team and have somebody else calling the shots. Um, and if it gets into the Crimson Dawn, I, I'm, I'm for that too. I'm actually would love to see more of, not necessarily. I'd love to see more Maul, but I'd love to see. Prince Zizor. I love to see the other, um, you know, leading gangs. Like, you know, we're in lawlessness a little bit now, and, and it's kind of shown, but not really. You know, I, I kind of want to see this transition of power from that level too. Um, and that, that there's a lot more to play in there than I think this this the Jedi stuff. Yeah. Um, in the canon timeline, isn't Maul dead at this point? Like legit dead, not fake dead. He is dead, but they keep trying to walk it. I mean, he is dead. Yes, Obi Wan yeah. killed him on Tatooine. Um, Can't wait to see that again. Right. Yeah, exactly. But like, the thing is, like, Filoni, Filoni says that Lucas made him bring back Maul. And here's the thing: it's like you never know what the show is going to do. So, I mean, I don't think we're going to see Maul. Um, in Mando, but I honestly wouldn't be shy. I don't. I honestly don't think anything is off the table. Um, the only thing you absolutely are not going to get is Harrison Ford. Like he will die before he shows up in any Star Wars thing ever again. But you know what? Billy D. Williams could stroll in. Um, you know, I could honestly see them making a play for anyone. Um, so I, I honestly would not be shocked if Darth Maul or you know Ray Park does another um, Zabrak with you know face tattoo like i'm not i i wouldn't be surprised if they went that route because i think feloni likes you know the death Amirian storyline the night sisters all that wouldn't be surprised well, we need another death Amirian. we don't need we yeah. need night sister we don't need maul to do that design again just like we didn't need ig88 you know we didn't need right. that just that specific assassin droid you know um so i i think you know i think we could do that without without absolutely without doing maul again I'm, he's a cool character they made him cooler but man we're done he's yeah done. we're done we're done we're put done. a we're just like uh you know we got maul again in the in the clone wars we saw the siege of mandalore again we don't need to see actually you know what here's the thing we could see maul in a flashback um into the siege of mandalore you yeah. could get a cool live action recreation of that fight between ahsoka and maul i'd be there for that i could and bo katan is there also so you have these People, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see that if, when they go down the Mandalore storyline. Uh, last question yeah. I want to I want to have us. Sorry, go ahead, Jeff. I was just saying, when they go up to the mountain, it's a flashback. They've opened that door where we could see the Valley of the Jedi. We could see a lot of things yeah. from different yeah, we could see A hand to God, if we do, I'm telling you right now, if, if that idea is true and 
Mando's eyes get opened to the highlight reel again, Willie, the Lego Star Wars holiday special with the highlight reel. Um, there's no question that Vader's in there somewhere. Like, oh, yeah. mark it down right now. You can put it on your scorecards. There's absolutely no question that Vader's in there somewhere. Um, but here's the thing I want to talk about last. And it's something that I'm struggling with, uh, something we've talked about before. But we're now in a different world. And the last time we had this chat, um, you know, my question was, will the Jedi ruin uh, the Mandalorian? And obviously that's hyperbolic. But I mean to say that does the show change um, because you've taken that, uh, you've taken the, the toothpaste out of the tube and you can't put it back in. So now we have Ahsoka, we've had lightsabers, we've had the Force explanation, Jedi Temple, like we're fully in that world. Um, so I don't know what you all think. Um, John, I know you feel strongly about this, so I'm going to start with you. Has your relationship to the show changed now that we've gone down that road? Because I know that you uh, disagree with me because you said that it's always been imprinted on the show since the second episode. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's an elephant in the room and they can't help but talk about it in some, in some form or another. Um, I... I was actually surprised at how much I felt like it didn't um, put us in a new sort of like, if you're thinking string theory wise, like put us in a new dimension, like a second secondary branch off of, you know, the show as itself. I think that, like I said earlier, it's very, it was modular enough that like, we don't need to have her as a recurring main character item. Like she can be, part of the major storyline in even season three don't bring it back for the rest of the season i don't care um but they left that option there rather than being like this is where the story is going now you don't have a choice come with us like i i liked that so i feel more confident now that it's not going to to go for lack of a better term down that rabbit hole or sarlacc pit whichever <laughs> Sarlacc is not deadly anymore, so it's okay. I know. <laughs> Cray Dragon eats Sarlacc Pit, eats Boba, F it eats Mandalorian. <laughs> so you now know the rock paper scissors relationship. That's why it's Cody. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jeff, what about you? How do you feel uh, so, about the show now? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I kind of, you know, I think it's spinoff fuel. I think all this is just a way to get to that point. I hope we get a Rogue Squadron spinoff if they're going to just keep pulling things, um, but that's not going to happen. I don't think I'm just going to stop hoping against hope. Um, I think a lot of this is 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 redemption, right? I think it, it's it's redemption for the sequels. It's redemption for the prequels. We're trying to get to a point where we can appreciate. I think the prequels have gone a long way since they came out, and people have just come around on them all together. But you know, one of the rules of the sequels is there's a lot of desperate stories out there. I mean, look at all the ships at the end of the you know the rise of skywalker i mean they, they're telling us that there's a there's a big there's a big universe out there and really what this reminds me of and that Jack, lando finds in one hour that's right yeah <laughs> uh they're just gonna keep cgi that just add more and more and more yeah. chips. um and, and john maybe you'll follow me on this there's a because i see your game of thrones poster in the back there's a um spinoff series to game of thrones um called the hedge knight and this idea that they've got the two um, these two kind of offbeat characters. One's a, a, a er, knight errant, um, or hedge knight, and he doesn't have any banner he's lying to. He just goes, does work for people, and then he's got a counterpart, Egg, and his name, the guy's named Duncan Egg. And Egg ends up being a Targaryen. He ends up being part of the ruling class, and he's hid, hiding with this hedge knight. And I think that's where we are. I think we're telling the story of this knight that gets rolled in with this, this larger-than-life story um, and I think what's going to happen is if he gets a little, he, he's got enough of the force now, he's going to go walk around and start talking to people about the force. And we're going to find out the galaxy at large has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. Like, great, cool. What's in Ahsoka? I don't care. <laughs> Give me my credits, you piece of garbage. Bang. <laughs> like, we're going to shoot at you now because you think you're something special and chosen you're not. So I think he needs a humbling. Um, but I think he needs a humbling not from, from the powers that be, but rather just the, the larger universe. Um, so I think that there's room there to go back. I don't think we've gone farther down um, the rabbit hole. And, and, and you mentioned your shark jumping. You missed a shark um, that I wanted to bring up at the end here. Okay. <laughs> no R2, no C3PO. 
We don't have mm. our major tie-ins. So as long as they stay out of this, I'm okay yeah, with it. Yeah, no, that's the third shark that they have not jumped yet. The Boba Fett was the first shark, then uh, Expanded Universe, Ahsoka. I mean, Ahsoka, Boba Fett, whatever it is. Or Boba was the first shark. Ahsoka is your second shark. Um, and then uh, Bo-Katan oh, was served that role. The third one is your A-list uh, legacy character, Luke Skywalker, Mace Windu, Necromancer Palpatine, a la Lord of the Rings, which I'm pretty sure we're going to get, uh, Lando, Chewie, R2, 3PO. I Wait, still think... 3PO's an A-list character now? What are we... Uh, a, no. Hey. You just sold so many of that guy's books. He's yeah. like... <laughs> call me an A-lister. <laughs> Um, who else? What did I say? Oh, yeah, Captain of the Millennium Falcon, Chewbacca, because Han Solo is not going to be. I, I want to see that because Chewbacca is just, he just gets no love in terms of story development. He's still playing the same game of Dejaric that he was 40 years ago. Um, Willie, how is the show for you now? Changed better now that no, Ahsoka. I, I mean, here? I. You know, I'm I'm very 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 happy with Ahsoka. Um, but I think Jeff really hit the head on the nail here, where um, you know, one of my favorite it actually might be my favorite thing that the sequel trilogy did is that no one in the larger universe knew about Luke, Han, and Leia, and that these characters who are heroes in our world weren't even heroes in the in canon universe. No one knew that Luke Skywalker became a Jedi and used the force to overthrow the empire, you know, the empire. No one knew this. And so I, I think that, you know, what Jeff said about having Mando go around and talk about this stuff and having the rest of the universe not know or care, I think is absolutely the best way to play it. Um, I, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm always worried when they, you know, when they bring the Jedi in, you know, I've definitely made the argument before that some of Star Wars best stories don't involve Jedi. Um, and but I, I think they did it, you know, in a very contained way with Ahsoka, where I don't think we're going to see, I don't think we're going to see um, Grogu become a Jedi and him and, and, you know, and Din go, I don't think it's going to become like a buddy cop show where it's like the Mandalorian and Din like save the universe together, which, which it could have been depending on how they played bringing the force in. Um, but I, I think I feel pretty good about, you know, them bringing in larger elements of the Force and the Jedi without taking away um, what this show is at its core. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of that, like you said, like this this was a very, you know, samurai Western episode that, yeah. th that you know, it was, it was a very, um, the Mandalorian episode of the Mandalorian that also had, you know, that also had a soap <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect description, honestly. As, as long as they can do stuff like that and they're smart about it, um, I think they can keep the core of what the, you know, of what makes the Mandalorian exciting, which is he's his own, you know, he's his own thing in a world where there is really no rule at the moment. Um, so that, that's my hope going forward. Yeah, I think I think you've all talked me into the fact that I'm not um, beyond hope here and that the show can still serve the function that I wanted to. So I appreciate you all um for doing that uh we'll we'll see um i it's such an easy button to press uh to quote batman to be too damn easy uh to cross the line and never go back but um well brian we'll remember i was gonna say remember that whatever they do with the jedi at the end ben solo has got to kill them so <laughs> it's, you know it's like how we'll get kyle katarn we'll get ahsoka yeah. And they're all just going to get stabbed by the prepubescent Ben Solo. I, like, don't want to get into Ben Solo because if they try to age up uh, the child uh, and they do a time jump at all, it's only 14 years um, to get to current age Ben Solo. Like, the Force, it's only 14 years to the, the Force Awakens from where we currently are. So, like, so you know, any time jump and, you know, Adam Driver's back on set, maybe. But uh, let's let's hope not um i i do want to just mention also just quickly as we're wrapping up uh david prouse died yesterday so i mean the force be with him to uh the guy that played darth vader the physicality of that role is incredible and as james shell jones said he was darth vader so um shout out to uh david prouse and his family and to all the star wars fans that uh you know met him and said what an awesome guy he was he's in a great uh documentary 
about kind of lesser known uh, people that were in the costume. So go check that out. So I believe it's on Netflix. Uh, and then my last thing that I want to mention is dream case scenario. We get to Jedi Mountain. Yoda reaches out, or Baby Yoda, the child, Grogu, whatever you want to call him. Although, also, Grogu doesn't matter. And you know why Grogu doesn't matter? And Willie, I wanted there to be a story reason for this. But you know why it doesn't matter? Because no one's going to call him Grogu. No one calls him the child. It's just Baby Yoda. Disney doesn't care. They're going to shove that merch down your throat no matter what. We could call him Tony Stark the Fourth McDuck, and everyone would still call him <laughs> Baby Yoda. So it doesn't matter. Anyways, the child reaches out with a force. And who shows up? playing his red ball organ, but it's Max Rebo. It's the greatest show we've ever seen. Um, <laughs> the Jedi, Jedi rocks. And that's the last we hear of that. Um, anyways, John, uh, Jeffrey, thank you for joining Willie and I tonight. Um, it was great talking to you and we'll be back at it again because I know we want to talk about solo, which we will do because it does not get the love um, that it deserves. But gentlemen, thank you all and have a good night. And may the force be with you all. Thank you. you oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs>